What's up, sons? It's Blind Drive with Sound Attack once again, and welcome to the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 PC mod part one. This is gonna be shown out at DreamHack Atlanta. Hopefully, fingers crossed, as long as we can get it completed. Some of the main components, obviously, is gonna be the new Z390 Special Edition Maximus Hero. What is it, 11? We're on 11 now. So, awesome. Uh, we already did a review for this motherboard, which you can check out in the description. A part of that also is that it came with a copy of the game, and I already owned the game, so we have a giveaway for the game as well that you can check out in the description too. A uh, huge shout out to Antec who is helping me get out to DreamHack Atlanta as well as supplied the case and the power supply. So the big parts there is the High Current Gamer 850 watt, which we also have a review of on the channel. This is actually the smaller black version. I have the one that also comes with the case in another build, and that's the review. However, it's pretty much the same thing. The big thing here that you want to note is that if you're going to be using a Z390 motherboard that you get the two CPU powers on the motherboard or on the power supply that you're using. And this case is the DF500 RGB. I like it because it's metal so I can drill, which was the big first thing that we did. So, so far, uh, this is where we've come to. Um, I've delitted the 8700K because my 9900K or 9700K, excuse me, that I did order uh, didn't come in, which is what I was gonna put in this build. We have an RTX 2080 coming or not coming, it's here, but we have a water block for it coming as well, which should be here this weekend sometime. I might just live stream doing some of that stuff. I might water block it, test it out beforehand. We did have some issues with the D-Lid, actually not really with the D-Lid, but the reason we have a stock Intel cooler on here is I needed to make sure it was working. Uh, we did the D-Lid and then we had some issues uh, posting. So I actually reseeded the CPU multiple times. Then I started noticing that the codes were changing uh, on the output. And it was interesting. One of them was like an A2. At first it was a CC, which I thought is usually like a CPU or something like that or reseeding memory. Then it was like an A2. I'll, I'll put, the, put the actual codes in when I can remember them. Um, but basically what I found out is that I had to pull the NVMe drive and, and plug it back in and then we posted. Weirdest thing, they were basically errors for uh, one side it was going into a, a, a CPI mode and or a CPI or whatever. And then the other one was just a basic uh, IDE error. Really weird, but we're good to go. Uh, we have the covers on the NVMe drive. We're just using a basic A data. It's only two PCI lanes, but it's fast enough. 500 gigabytes. We're gonna be playing Call of Duty out there. That's all we need. So that's it. We did go ahead and swap out. Originally I had Corsair Dominator Platinum, which is the white ones. We got the RGB Vengeance Pro. Uh, because I want to change the colors orange. I was also going to see if they still have those little uh, mm. slots, but that or, because I, I feel like the two, and you're, we're talking about aesthetics here, I feel like just having the two on here um, is, you know, not as good looking as having four. So we might go buy another kit. It's only rated for 3000 megahertz. As we're on Intel, it's not as big of a deal, but it can be you know, better to have faster. So we'll probably clock it up to 3,200. It'll probably go there, no problem, most likely. Uh, that aside, where we are at now, let's talk about the case. Talk about the case and where we've gotten with this. So the big part always when you're doing these custom loops is gonna be the case, etc. What we actually have here is the Alpha Cool 150 millimeter kit. It's a pump res combo. But on Mod My Mods, you can order replacement reservoir tubes. And I find it easier to order the kit and then get the tubes. And then I have extra hardware for things that I might want to do, as well as just uh, they don't actually have a kit with a that comes with a 300. So I also need a measure. So here's the original. And so when I measured, I basically 
got this all in, measured, and then ordered the, the longer tube. And then we got a hole saw drill. And sorry, I didn't get to pre-record all of this. Uh, I meant to, but it's just been so busy. I got this one right here, which is a uh, six, 60 millimeter. Yeah, 60 millimeter. And we drilled a hole with the hole saw in the PSU shroud. And then we put the pump back here in the bottom and drilled some extra holes in the bracket that comes with it, mounted that there. And then it comes with these, uh, let's see, yeah. So it comes with these little brackets, um, which is for mounting to a radiator usually or to like the back of a case or something like that. Uh, what we did is we took this apart and we used it to cover up the hole and help also secure it because it tightens it up. And so it's it's really sturdy. It's it's not going anywhere. And I think it looks really clean. It also covered up, you know, the little scratches from the drill, which we could pull this and paint this, but I only have two weeks to get this done. Which brings me to the most difficult part that we're gonna have to deal with here is that, um, I do not want to have any tubing that I don't need to have above the PSU shroud. So we're going to mount the, the block on the CPU today, and then we're going to mount the motherboard in here and start planning out lines. We can start planning out the CPU line first. Now I don't know if we want to come into the top of the res, which I think would look really, really cool or we go down all the way into the bottom and drill a hole. So if this line doesn't look good, which is the one we're gonna run and we can run it now without having to actually have the GPU in, we're gonna try to run the line from the CPU block to the top, see what it looks like. If it doesn't look good, then we'll plan on draw, dr drilling another hole in the PSU shroud. We're also gonna drill, drill one and that one's confirmed with the GPU. I'm just gonna try to go basically install the GPU, mark a line, drop a tube straight down into the PSU shroud. And then we're gonna use soft tubing under here. So I have a female to female connector, uh, which we will use down here. And we'll put just a regular compression barb for soft tubing on here, connect everything up down here uh, with the soft tubing. So we'll probably go uh, out from the res into the radiator, which we actually ordered another radiator. When I initially ordered the radiator, I ordered a 30 millimeter. Now I was gonna put like an additional 120 or something around here that we could fit maybe up here. But uh, we actually have room, because I had a 240 millimeter uh, Foiba radiator and we have room here for a 60 millimeter uh, rad. So we're gonna put a single 360 millimeter by 60 millimeter radiator in the front here. And then we're just gonna have a single exhaust, which will keep us that, that uh, positive air pressure and also have quite a bit of cooling capacity because we're going with a really thick radiator there. And then we'll still be able to look really clean because we'll have no tubes having to be run up here. They'll all be run down here. And other than possibly the one going from the CPU block into the uh, reservoir. So pretty awesome, pretty awesome. What we'll do now, hopefully, is well, we can just set this to the side, can't we? Is I'm going to move the camera we are going to install the water block on the, well, motherboard on the CPU. Okie dokie. So I'm going to pull the memory so it doesn't get in the way. Because I don't like it to get in the way. It did post in the XMP profile work, but other than that, I don't know much more about that memory. The video card, we have a lot of information on. So okay so we basically just need to pull this little intel cooler by the way even with the d-lid this intel cooler does not even cool 
a stock uh, 8700K. I wouldn't recommend it. But I did check, basically I did run uh, a light load on it to check and make sure that all of the cores were within a couple temperatures of each other, just to check for uh, any kind of, oh, come on. Any kind of uh, throttling that might've been going on. Or not throttling, any kind of bubbles that may have been on the D-lid there, just to make sure I got rid of them. And then I believe we're ready for the block. Now we didn't go with a crazy block. Um, I didn't want to spend a ton of money, so we have the Alpha Cool Nexus CPU block. I've never used the cheaper ones, so kind of curious how it'll, how it'll work out. I'm assuming it'll be fine. Doki. So I think we're finally ready to go ahead and install the motherboard into the Antec D500. As you can see here, we got the motherboard installed. It looks like there's a lot more room up here than I thought there was. You could probably put fit, you could definitely fit a slim rad up there. Um, obviously not with what we've done here. We would have to get a 270 tube if we wanted to add one, which is not a bad idea since I already have one. I already have the O-Cool. That's kind of tempting, kind of tempting. I think it'll look cleaner this way though. It'd be easier to work with. So like I said, our other, our options could be coming direct into the top. Let me see if a 90 will fit up there. 90 probably will. So that'll fit. So we could do a tube across the top, which actually might look kind of good and fill out that top spot just like that. And I think we would just come right off the block. How many turns would that be? Could go to the back. Down. Yeah, so straight up, over, another curve in. It's gonna be a hard bend, but I think we can do it. So we do 
That's going to be a lot of 90s. Good thing we have a lot of them. So I think the way we'd want to do this, if this was our decision to go this route, would just be to come up. It'd be one 90 and another 90. Straight into there. Which I think there's enough room. And then that would fill out this top spot here, essentially. Okie doke, sons. Thanks for bearing with me through all the cuts and stuff because we did have our memory card fill up and we had two batteries die and so on. But this is as far as we've made it today. We are probably gonna be starting on bending on the next episode. We're gonna basically have two hardline tubes, that's it and that's gonna make this build really easy. The hardest bend is gonna be this top one because we're gonna be going uh, two 90s. We'll have a 90 here and a 90 over there. The only other idea I had was coming straight out and just bending. We might have an extension for, I'll have to check. If I don't have an extension, we'll go with the initial. The reason I wanted to go this way, and actually we could still go this way. Uh, the reason I wanted to is to cover up this top spot. But we need to bring it out. I got calipers right here, actually. So if we wanted to, um, if we wanted to, are these long enough? Should get us close enough. That would be 94 millimeters. This is gonna be really rough because that's not gonna be exactly right. Because we still got another little bit. But let's say, what is that? 52 millimeters plus another seven so that, well, it's about 60 millimeters. So we would need to come out another 35 millimeters or something like that to line those up, which we might have an extension for. Let's see, this one is a 30. And I think I have a 42. This one is a 40. So it's possible this would eliminate an entire bend. Possible we just throw this right here. That's gonna go too far out. I think we need exactly a 35, which is funny, but let's check this 30. Uh, that would actually work. So that's pretty close. We would basically just do boom, boom and do 190 right there, which I think I can pull off. Awesome. So there you go. There's where we're at. I just wanted to see what this bend was going to be like to see if I needed to come out and go down in and draw, drill two holes. We're just going to have to drill one hole. Um, the power supply does sit right below where the GPU would drop. We have enough room to maybe do it on the outside, but I think we're gonna do a 90 on the GPU run and plop it in there. So basically we would have at least what I'm thinking is we would come up with the female adapter on the bottom. So this would be like here behind the shroud, but a female version. And then we would just pop this right here and then do a 90-90 and then done. We'll just have to make sure we measure how far out we need to be from the side. And that would fill everything out nicely. Boom. Okay. We'll get to work on the bending here shortly. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. If you have any suggestions, let me know before I fuck it up too bad in your opinion. Otherwise, I'll see you at DreamHack Atlanta or next Tuesday.